I ask the Minister for Justice to detail the actions her department has taken to date to ensure the provision of appropriate facilities and interview suites in court service buildings for those who are vulnerable or who have invisible or uh, visible disabilities. Thank you very much, Gear Herlock, and I thank the Deputy for asking this very important question in relation to actions the Department has taken to ensure the provision of appropriate facilities and interview suites in court service buildings for those who are vulnerable or who have invisible or visible disabilities. The Government has invested substantial additional resources into the court service in recent years to support a modernisation programme they are implementing. The Deputy will appreciate that the management of the courts is the responsibility of the court service. I can, however, assure her that the Government will support the court service in their work to create an environment where justice can be administered efficiently and accessibly for all citizens. I am therefore very pleased to say that the court service has made a clear commitment to ensuring appropriate facilities are available for vulnerable people and those living with disabilities. New buildings are, buildings are designed with a wide range of facilities for users, including vulnerable witness suites, <coughs> victim support suites, hearing loop systems and accessible spaces. It is court service policy that all newly constructed or refurbished buildings wholly reflect the specific requirements and aspirations of relevant law and good industry practice, including key building standards with respect to the needs of disabled persons, as well as guidance from the National Disability Authority on Universal Design Principles. The court service has adopted the approach that full accessibility should be provided even in refurbished heritage buildings, which otherwise may be exempt in some respects. The approach taken is that facilities for all users in each of the separate circulation zones in a courthouse should be fully accessible. Increased use of technology and remote courts have also eased some of the challenges associated with travel to court buildings for users with physical disabilities, and these facilities are to be expanded further. Similarly, the court service modernisation programme and the growing digitisation of services also has the potential to make access easier by taking full account of the need to ensure that digital access is itself provided in an accessible manner. In addition to its approach to physical facilities, the court service is also continually investing in initiatives to improve the experience of all courts users. I would mention just two projects in particular, just a minute card, which is one, and the new um, and I will address the other one. Thank you, okay, thank you, Minister. Um, I suppose I'm just conscious that we all need to become more aware and understanding of, of um, disability in general, but invisible disabilities in particular, and I suppose I'm talking more about autistic people. Um, autistic people would have given evidence recently at a disability committee meeting about their experience with the court service and they felt that there were absolutely no supports in place for them um, and that they felt it very difficult to fit into that system. <coughs> even, but like, even dealing with you know, the whole legal aspects, if they had to apply for free legal aid, that's a very complicated process, a lot of information gathering and can be very overwhelming and they just lack the skills to require the assistance. Many people who are autistic are also have a, an attention de deficit disorder and so you know, give all the evidence and everything that's happening, there's so much happening in a court that it, it can be very, very overwhelming. There's a lot of things going on at once. Even to enter a courtroom, the, the need of familiarisation beforehand, and I don't think that process is happening, and, but I'm hoping that it can be something that can be done with people if they make um, the court service aware that they are autistic, so that, uh, or even an advocate there to help them. And even the anxiety that can build as they wait for their case to actually to, to come up you know, can be quite overwhelming Question. as well. As I say, in addition to the approach of physical facilities, the court service is also continuing to invest in initiatives to improve the experience of all court users. Um, I would mention two projects in particular. The first is the Just a Minute card. The court service provided jam card training to all of its staff in 2021. As the deputy is aware, this card allows people with a hidden disability or communication barrier to tell others that they need extra time and understanding in a private and easy way. I would also like to note that the very impressive work the court service has carried out to provide trauma-informed training to a wide range of staff and members of the judiciary. To date, 457 court service staff have completed the training, resulting in plain language information being written with a trauma-informed lens. The EU Dublin Family Courts at Hammond Lane Design is also benefiting from this approach, while frontline staff supporting people making domestic violence applications are supporting people in a different way to reduce the requirement to retell their stories. The Judicial Studies Committee, established in 2020 by the Judicial Council, has devised and delivered an avoiding re-traumatisation programme in collaboration with the SSR, the Dutch Judicial Training Institute, and the focus of this training was to give judges a deeper and more realistic understanding of victims' experience. Um, 
Thank you. Uh, yeah, I suppose it's important. You're talking about training for courts uh, staff, and that would be very important because the discrepancy across staff is, is, it can, be, can, be, can be quite immense. I mean, some are very understanding and some are not. And that goes down from judges right down to solicitors, right down to, to people with working in the court service. The Joint Committee on Justice had a report on courts and courthouses just ju July of last year. And some of the issues that you have uh, talked about there are in that. And, and you're welcome. It's like the jam ca uh, card is very important. I mean, they said that the, the early stages of their modernisation programme have prioritised ordinary users of the court system, and that's their words, not, not mine, um, because I think under the UNCRPT we have to ensure that all people have access to justice and to the legal system, and therefore we have to take into account that some people are vulnerable and need a, assistance in that. I mean, the, the, um, the prison service have actually been in in front of the Committee of, on Disability as well, and they've said there's quite a high number of people within our prison system that have uh, disabilities, have them hidden disabilities, are autistic or have mental health issues. And you question sometimes, should they be there? Well, first of all, if they've received the proper support in the community, they might not have been there in the first place. But perhaps some of the issues in the court uh, would have ended up them being there when they shouldn't be there at all. So it's something that we have to take yeah. into account. And I, look, I certainly hear the deputy's concerns and, and, and genuineness in relation to this issue in terms of disabilities, both um, obvious and those that are hidden. And as I say, we are both in terms of physicality of courts, putting in that program to ensure that our courts are accessible, but also in terms of training for people to be able to deal with, with vulnerable witnesses, with uh, vulnerable uh, victims, and, and, and all uh, vulnerable court users, so that they can be dealt with in a, in a sympathetic manner. That training will continue to be um, rolled out, and uh, ensuring that access to justice for everybody, uh, and, and in particular for those people who are vulnerable who have disabilities is a priority for both Minister McEntee and myself. Thank you for your look.